since I started making this video we got quite a few new things to look at. Thankfully I think the very first shot was still the most impactful of all. It is also one of the best introductions you'd hope to have, so... As much as one pick teaser goes, this is great. It immediately captures the tone and the majesty we expect from the Tolkien Legendarium. We see the graceful lady in white looking at distance as nature flourish and the great city prosper in peace. Looks untouched, looks pristine, looks like heaven. That's because it is. What you see here is actually set in the Undying Lands, Valinor. Yes, this is the place where Frodo and Bilbo go with the Gandalf and the elves at the end of Lord of the Rings, their version of afterlife. The world is actually called Darda and Middle-earth is just one part of it. If you ask me, it would best be known as the Tales of Arda, but that's me. The series takes place in the Second Age, before Lord of the Rings, but what you see here is actually even more in the past. It is not the Second Age, it is not even the First Age, this is before the Age itself. There is no sun and there is no moon. The light that you see here is coming from the two sacred trees, the only ones in the world. The golden one Laurelin and the silver one Telperion, located on the hill called Ezelohar, which is near the center of Eleanor. They are raised and nurtured by the two goddesses, Yavanna and Nienna. This beauty did not last, as the great betrayal took place. Under the cover of darkness and confusion, the dark god Melkor, later known as Morgoth, in union with Angoliant, a dark spirit and mother of all spiders, has struck the trees and poisoned them, plunging the world into darkness. In the aftermath, in a desperate attempt to redeem the damage, Nienna and Yavanna barely managed to revive the last fruit of Laurelin, which became the sun, and the last flower of Telperion, which became the moon, outside and out of reach. But the only true light of the trees resides in the Silmarils, the greatest treasure of all. However, the most important is the life that they gave to the world itself, to all the other trees. Despite the malice and destruction, they still live on the earth in a few remains, including the white tree of Gondor. It was always the core element of elvish and human culture. Looking at the location itself, there are a couple of different maps, but they all share the same key details. Two major cities, the river and the mountains. The first that comes in mind is the coastal elvish town of Tyrion. It has the port and is surrounded by mountains. The only problem is the distance. The trees are far, far away from the place and there is another town in between. The only way it could be Tyrion is if the entire continent is of a size of a... Uh, I don't know, uh, Slovenia. Another major difference is the look of it. Tyrion is more narrow and has a single spire design. Also, it is elvish, that differs a bit from what we see in the picture. It has more broader design and contains lots of domes dressed in silver and gold. Like a city of gods, Valimar. Yes, I do believe it is Valimar. It appears to be connected with the river and the mountains are probably too small to be visible on the map of the continent, just like the waterfalls. The various buildings extend outside of town, the one element closer to reality. You can see various paths connected and it's instantly more believable and interesting. There is also one of the swan ships, sailing to the dock. They are commonly made and used by the elves, but in this time, who knows? Artistic freedom is always a possibility, even yet, the series will have its own map. But what this means for fans and the series itself, it means a lot. It means it won't shy away from showing the bigger picture. The stories told in the Silmarillion and other books are far beyond what we've seen in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. The potential is simply incredible. 
Last but not least, the lady in white remains a mystery. Crazy rumors say it could be Melkor in disguise. Easy guess would be Avana, queen of nature herself. But the most votes go to Galadriel. Yes, she lived longer than most of the Eldar and have been there to almost see the very beginning. However, I believe her hair to be much brighter, even before catching light of the trees. Although she would be very young at the time, it would be greatly poetic to hear her narrate the plot, once again after Lord of the Rings. That is it. Regardless of how the show turns out, if you like this video, be sure to let me know, so I can make some more. Till next time, may the light of the trees shine your way. The trees like torches blazed with light.